How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Seth Julian, welcoming you to tonight's broadcast, where we're going to talk about the perfect storm, the retreat from equities, market trading opportunities. So hello and welcome. Uh, I'd like you to please uh, notify me on the question and answer chat board, whether you see my uh, uh, see the screen, hear my voice, and we will begin straight away. There we go. All good, says Osman. Very nice to see you. Welcome, Muhammad. Good voice and good day. Good. All right, that's good enough. That's good enough for me. Let's get underway. All right, uh, let me introduce yourself, myself. My name is Seth Julian. I'm the uh, chief global strategist here at Alvexo. I'm 64 years old. I've been trading in the capital markets for 51 years. I have uh, degrees in political economy and advanced degrees in international trade and economics and uh, finance and uh, business management. Uh, I started my career in Wall Street uh, in the early 80s in an outfit called Bankers Trust, and I've had three different jobs with different uh, international brokerages uh, since then. Um, I do have one protocol in the room, and that is that you are asked to please uh, – hi, Joe. Thank you. Good to hear you. Good to – welcome to the room. Uh, that is that you're please asked to ask your questions in real time. Um, it adds more to the dialogue effect rather than the – coma-inducing monologue effect, which nobody wants. So let us begin. Today is a simple procedure. There's no math involved. There's no notes. It's going to be simple. I hope you have a beer and a sandwich. It's a straightforward approach today and should not take us too long. But again, I, I do uh, encourage the act of questioning. It's, and I don't want anybody to feel intimidated or inhibited in any way about asking. Uh, we respect the uh, question process here to sign a commitment, and then we don't mean to be derisive or derogatory to anybody who asks a question. They're not suitable. We'll defer them to uh, offline uh, responses. So let's get underway. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are just finishing up the end of the earnings reports from Q1, and there are obviously delayed of Q1. So by the end of Q2, we finish up with Q1. Come July, we'll start with the Q2 report. Those of you who follow this uh, mania, this insanity that goes on every quarter, which drives me nuts, because the only one that really matters and the one that we can actually trade seriously on is, is, the, is the Q4 reports that come out in January, February and March. Anyway, the ones that come out have shown fairly strong earnings among uh, America's and, and Europe's corporations, but they are also foretelling weak future demand. They are all coming in with... Um, uh, outlooks that are weaker than they currently are now. So that should be fairly obvious what that message is. And um, so they showed continuing robust growth in profits. That's not surprising. And many, though, not what we grew used to following the, uh, the recovery from the plague. Once the plague bounced back, as you'll recall, in Q2, Q3, Q4 of 2020, 2021 was, was, was boom o -rama. And then from January until now, we are in a slowdown because of the effects caused largely by the pandemic. And we'll get to those anyway. Forecasts for Q2 are looking decidedly weaker. Societies in the developed world are returning to their pre-plague behavior patterns, meaning that uh, they're traveling more, though not in great numbers. Travel is starting to come back to life. Um, people are ordering in less. They bought all the equipment they needed for um, uh, work at home, et cetera, and sales are dropping off. Now, add to this the presence of inflation that stems from supply line kinks due to the initial pandemic halts. And you get, if any of you have ever taken a look at the uh, Google Maps, or, yeah, the Google Maps picture of Shanghai Harbor, you'll be well aware that there are over, last time I looked, which, is, uh, which was Monday, I believe, there were over three, 365 uh, freighters, no, not, not uh, dissimilar to this giant Maersk uh, vessel, waiting at anchor. China is, in a, is under house arrest because of their silly policy. They, can't, they haven't learned. They're not able to cope with, with the uh, plague. And so they have to shut down. They have to put their people under house arrest. So that's causing and will cause, we haven't even begun to see, but uh, it's going to cause huge supply chain kinks uh, and supply line backup. And then, of course, there's the unexpected skyrocketing demand that, that resulted from the um, uh, re recovery from the plague, as well as commodity prices surging 
from the Euro land war. This is a major event of uh, really uh, enormous proportions that uh, is already affecting food prices worldwide. Um, the price of wheat is just 65, 70% higher than it was uh, 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 three months ago. Oil, uh, natural gas, the works. So this Euroland war is causing huge financial and economic problems worldwide. And finally, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the house arrest of tens, tens upon tens of millions of Chinese. There are 25 million people under house arrest in Shanghai alone. Beijing is now coming around with, a, with another wave. There's another 10 million people in Beijing. Tens of millions of people are um, under house arrest. And the storm, it, that, this is why this is a perfect storm. Oh, yes, did I mention that, infl that um, interest rates are rising as well? So uh, interest rates rising mean that uh, the cost of money is no longer zero. So there's going to be a lot of trouble ahead. And the top line and the bottom line effects of the post-pandemic recovery economics are uh, largely behind us now. Uh, supply lines that we, and this is just a review, they kicked up during the initial stages of the plague and they still have not straightened out and they're going to get worse. What open warfare in the European landmass means for global prices and finance? We'll take a look in a minute. Placing 25 million Shanghaiese under house arrest will have long term price implications. So let me uh, switch now to, um, to uh, the standard graphs. Let me see if I can bring these over in an easy way. A quick look. And. Uh, as I've mentioned to you many times, I'm a much better video jockey. But um, these are the indices, <clears throat> the worldwide stock indices. All right, and this is really a, oh, the, this by the way is not a stock index, this is an index of the US dollar. So leave the US dollar index out. Every single major stock index, including the mighty Tada Wool, I might add, which was buoyed by uh, rising oil prices is no longer so we are looking at an across the board de excuse me decline in virtually every major index in the world this is the euro stocks 50 the south african 40 <clears throat> spanish index the tada wool the dow jones the uh, milan the UK, the FTSE 500, FTSE 100. This is the Singapore 30, Straits Times. This is the Nikkei, the mighty Nikkei. This is the dollar index, so don't pay attention to this. This is the strength of the dollar. I just only have it listed in the index. The Aussie 200, ba boom, bitty boom. I, need I need I go on? It's all right there in black and white. <clears throat> Interest rates are rising. Stocks are falling. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this today. Last night, um, Chair Powell raised the interest rate in the United States by three quarters of a percent, 75 basis points. Three quarters of a percent in one jump is, un well, it is precedented, but not since nine, uh, uh, 19, 1994. How's that? We're going back. What is that? Uh, four, four, no, 204 to 14. It's uh, 21 years. Excuse me, did I say 21? <clears throat> 22 years. It was a long time. A long time. And uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. So that is the long and the short. That's why we are in a really, you know, perfect storm is an awful sort of turn of a phrase. I grant you that. But um, we are in difficult time. Difficult time. Let's drill down just a bit so I can show you in particular some of the stocks that might be worth uh, taking a look at. Because we are talking about stocks. This, by the way, is uh, trading. Uh, we are, oh, I took the wrong one. Excuse me, I meant to take this one. Because I like this one more, I have two different setups. Uh, it's just a different coloration pattern. Um, my point is that, uh, 
Yes, there we go. Sorry. <clears throat> and so let's go back on this one to the um, take a look at the the equity. So we're talking about stocks and the perfect storm. Um, what I want to point out to you, and, and again, since we were on Apple, I, I meant to show you Apple indeed. Look, see, this is a one-week chart. You can see that in the last two months, uh, this goes back here, the beginning of January. And this is this is uh, paradigmatic for all of the major tech stocks. Anyway, pardon me. They've all fallen off since the beginning of the year. They've broken the 20-day moving average, the 50-day uh, uh, exponential moving average, and are headed at full steam toward the 200-day move. <clears throat> now, I want to point out that there's a slight rise in volume as we, uh, as the price falls. All during this rise, and this, of course, is this is the pandemic right here. I'm the big yeah, this is the this is the pandemic in Q2 of 2020. There's the big fall off, and then ba 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 boom. But now you'll notice that all during this huge rise, volume was volume fell off. This this was driven by high volume, and then after that, volume fell off. Volume is slightly higher here. That means that there's more sentiment behind this. This means that there are people who actually are there are more sellers than buyers, and there are more traders writ large than there were previously. That's an important sign. Let's take a look at the other um, the other big tech giants. I want to show you these guys. Now, this is a particularly sad story. This is Alibaba. Their fall goes back uh, much earlier because the um, the uh, Xi administration in China, the, di the dictatorship, the administration, like it changes with elections, decided to clamp down on the tech giants. And that's why we see this price. So in the, if you're looking at Chinese stocks, and this is really the only one I would look at at the moment, but we carry others here at the house, this suffers from yet another burden, which is the burden of Chinese heavy-handed uh, corporate uh, regulation. It's not really regulation in the in the standard Western democratic sense of the term in so far as in the West, by the way, I want to make clear that the West wrestles with the same problems that she seeks to uh, ameliorate with his ham-handed, ham-fisted approach. The, the Western technological giants are monopolists. They earn monopoly rent and mo therefore monopoly profit. They squeeze out com competition. They're brutal. They're, 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 they go against um, um, the principles of capitalism. And as yet in the West, they're above the law. Well, one of the great things about capitalism, in theory anyway, is that no one is above the law, including Zuckerberg or Apple or Facebook or Google or any of them. But they're slow. The wheels of justice grind very slowly. And um, it's going to take them time to regulate those corporations in a, in a fair and, and equitable way. But they'll get there. Now, Joe asks, most stocks are down at least 35%. Energy is down. Materials is down. Could you recommend where we can find a refuge? Yes, I can, sir. It's not a pleasant picture, but I do want you to look at these guys. Uh, LMT. Let me find LMT here. I've got a lot of stocks, unfortunately. Here we go. Take a look at this one. Again, it's, it's settled down, but these are going to come back. Anybody know who it is? Oh, it says right there, Lockheed Martin Corporation. Lockheed, and I'll give you a much bigger data set to give you the full of Lockheed Martin. See my point here? Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's a little bit staggering here. Lockheed Martin, Joe. Lockheed Martin, by the way, is an armaments manufacturer. They are going to prosper immensely because the weapons that the West has supplied uh, to the Ukrainians in their time of need well, I, I don't. That's actually a, a delicate point, in my opinion. I I am not of the opinion that the this is an outright attack uh, on an innocent, um, free, freedom-seeking nation uh, by a power-hungry maniac, i.e., Putin. No, I don't. 
subscribe to that particular narrative, as we like to say. I have a different narrative, and my narrative, simply stated, standing on one leg, is that the West could have pre prevented this. But leave that aside. I don't intend to stand on a soapbox here tonight. This isn't a rant. But those weapons that, that have been supplied to the Ukraine are come from arsenals, come from you know arsenals that 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 are that that standing forces rely on. Those are going to have to be replenished, and they're not going to be replenished at, at Walmart. They're going to be replenished by these guys, uh, among others. Here's one for you, Joe. I got a couple for you. They're all in the same uh, family. Let me find another one for you. Um, where is it? Is this it? I think that's it. Yeah. I rest right here. Okay. Take a look at this. This is Rheinmetall. Rheinmetall makes most of the barrels, weapons barrels, delivery barrels in all of Europe. Tanks, howitzers, cannons, um, missile tubes. Um, I don't. I think they also might make some of the shell shells for those. The, the actually ammunition as well. I'm not sure about that. <clears throat> but these guys make weapon systems. The uh, they make a lot of stuff. I rest my case here. I'm willing to bet that this is just about February 23rd. Let's take a look. February 22nd. There we go. I rest my case. You see my point. Uh, there's one more. Just since since you asked, Joe, and since this is something that I'm afraid we all need to be aware of. Where is Thales? Let me see if I can find Thales. By the way, yeah, this is Thales of Friends in Paris. That's right. Oh, what is it? H.O. And yeah, that's a handy name for it, but H.O. Thales, that's it. Same price. This exact same pattern that uh, Rheinmetall traced. These guys are to um, uh, European weaponry what Raytheon is to U.S. weaponry. Thales makes the high-tech end of stuff, the radars, the guidance systems, the um, the um, control and command, command and control and communication systems. They do the tech end of, 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 of modern weaponry in Europe. And there's one more, and then I'll then I'll I'll just show you the last refuge. It's called British Aerospace BAE. I hope I have that readily available. Fortunately. They, it's hard to find them when the list is too long. I should really narrow it down. Uh, B A E. Uh, where is it? B A E B A E B A E systems. There we go. B A. That's what it's called in Europe. B A. Of course, I, I think there's also Boeing. But anyway, British Air B A E. It used to be British Aerospace Systems. B A E systems. The same pattern. All right, Joe. I sure I've answered your question there. If, on the other hand, you're asking for non-weapons uh, sources, there is what we would go to in such a case would be the here. There are some recession-proof, um, inflation-proof stocks, and although this isn't looking good in the last month or so, um, this is Walmart. That might have been one of them. Let me show you Amazon. Maybe Amazon's having even a rougher time. Um, you see why this is a perfect storm, ladies and gentlemen. This is not does not hold a lot of promise for the stock trader, let alone the stock investor. Where is Amazon coming up here? I got to make another list here. It's too long. You know, I just divide them up. Amazon tracing the same uh, pattern that Walmart's tracing. So unfortunately, the best I can recommend in terms of positive refuge is um, those weapons manufacturers. The energy companies actually are doing surprisingly well. I'll take a look at Exxon Mobil. That one's doing okay because the price of gas is so uh, oil is so high. Uh, Exxon Mobil is doing very well. Is Exxon Mobil again? The last week it's been rough, but prices have fallen in oil. Exxon Mobil is another good choice, Joe. Um, so the energies are doing well. I know that uh, 
Marathon Oil is doing well. Some of the energy corporations are doing well. Saudi Aramco has had a, a bit of a difficult time, but they're also doing well, and Tadu will less so. Um, but what I would like to uh, suggest, Joe, and to all of you, actually, is that when times are bad, sell. Let me just take a brief digression backwards and say that if you're holding stocks for the long run, if you're investing in stocks and, and you're worried about and, and you're not you don't plan to liquidate those stocks in the near term, forget about this episode. It'll come and go reasonably quickly. This is while it's a perfect storm timing wise. In terms of the depth and the damage, it's not going to be so bad. The interest rates are raising quickly, stiffly. It should arrest inflation quick, fairly quickly within a year, year and a half. Um, um, unemployment is fairly uh, strong, so that it, you know, there won't be an excessive an amount of jobs that are lost in the in the coming recession or in the present recession. And make no mistake, anybody who's still debating the question of whether we're in a recession is not reading the newspapers. We're in a recession, okay? But um, you know, I've seen worse. It's, this is an economic cyclical recession. It's not a financial recession like in 2007, which are much deeper much more severe and that's last much longer. So it's not like that. But what I, so having said that, if on the other hand you're trading or you do need to liquidate uh, now because you're approaching a time and age or your kids are going to college or whatever reason there may be for liquidating your st some of your stock portfolio, you need to take a defensive uh, approach. There's no doubt about that. Sell short. Liquidate your positions before the losses become too huge. And sell, and sell short. And those of you who are unfamiliar with shorting may want to tune into a session that we'll have. It's not on the books currently, but I, I will make a note to myself to uh, do a session uh, maybe in August or September on shorting. But sell short. All of those stocks that we saw plumbing, if we go back to Apple or Facebook or, or Amazon or any, you all you saw them all. Sell them short. Yeah, here's Apple. Said, all you do, you buy low and sell high. We all know that rule. Sell high and buy low is simply its counterpart. And therein lies the entire Torah, as the Jews say, of, the, of trading. Buy low, sell high, sell high, buy low. That's all you need to know. You don't need fancy degrees. You don't need experience at Wall Street firms. All you need to know is understand that simple dictum. So when things are, are falling, sell them short. It's easy to do at our house. And for those of you who are uh, considering opening a trading account with us who are not currently clients of ours, understand that we trade uh, in, we'll be trading in stocks very shortly, but we trade in derivatives of stocks called uh, contracts for different CFDs. Shorting is a pleasure. It's easy. It's cost-free. It has no inherent, none of the inherent um, uh, complexities of shorting actual stocks. It's efficient. It's cheap. It's 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 fast. I rest my case. You saw what was going on here. You've been reading the paper. You know what's going on. You see, sell it. If you sell it for here at 134, and then you decide, okay, you've made your profit. This looks like a nice re uh, support or resistance point here at 107. The difference between 134 and 107 is, is what, 25, 24 points? When you buy it back to close the position, the difference between what you sold it for and what you buy it back for, remember you sold it for 134, you buy it back at 108, that's your profit. Sell high, buy low. So the simplest, most direct way of profiting from a downturn is to sell short. I would direct you to a book by uh alexander elder and those of you who are regulars in the room know that i'm a uh i'm a hard, uh, ardent student of dr elders i've met him personally i've attended uh one of his sessions uh once when he uh had the went one in cyprus back about 15 years ago and I'm st i stay in touch with him he's a he's a fine guy i highly recommend all of his books but one of his books is called uh, uh sell short can you write down his name here please muhammad surely let me see if i can do that. I'm not so good with this. Um, let me see. It's uh, Dr. Here we go. Alec uh, 
or Alexander is his full name, Elder. And I want to send this to everybody, Dr. Alexander Elder. And he uh, write, he's written many, many books. The first one I highly recommend, it's a great way to start, called um, Trading for a Living. I don't know if it's still in print. You can get it used. It, it, he sold millions of copies of it. Well worth the time. I recommend all of his works to you. By the way, I can recommend hundreds of works. By the way, I have a session that I do. And I haven't done it in, in really a long, long time. It's just called a reading list for traders. <clears throat> it's my chosen, excuse me, list. And I have a I have a fairly substantial library at this point in my life of books that I recommend. Um Anyway, but starting with Elder is a great place, and his book about short selling is is really essential. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming into a half hour here, 26, 27 minutes. Um, let's open the floor up to some more questions. It's, I, as I mentioned, it's a fairly simple, straightforward proposition tonight. Um, it's not complicated. There's no, as I as I mentioned, you saw, there's no numbers, there's no notes, no complicated calculations. It's a straightforward. <clears throat> excuse me, macro backgrounder. So are there any particular questions you'd like to uh, discuss tonight uh, concerning tonight's subject? Don't be bashful. Feel free. And it doesn't have to be on tonight's subject. It can be on anything, actually. Do you, sh do you shipping stocks will continue to regress joe restate do you shipping stock do i think shipping stocks will continue to regress uh how do you know when recession is over and yes yeah, sorry about that shipping stock uh typing too fast to do it. okay okay great there are plenty of questions let me get to one at a time we'll go right through shipping stocks are down now because there's nothing to ship shanghai's closed most of what goes on those giant container ships, and keep in mind, each one of those Maersk vessels can hold 20,000 containers. Now, not all of them are that mammoth, but figure the, figure the most of them are around 10 to 15,000 freighters. There's 270 of them anchored uh, out at sea outside of Shanghai Harbor, okay? So they're not doing well now, but you can be damn sure that once, once they come out, the shipping is going to be great stocks to own. You know recession's over when uh, unemployed when, when when corporations start really hiring back again, when inflation is under control and profits are up. So we saw that profits were still pretty healthy at the end of Q1, but we're going to see because the corporations told us we're going to see profits are going to be slimmed down significantly come Q2. So when those things revert, um, okay, that's how we'll know. Um, which stocks have a potential for growth after the downtrend is over, Osman asks? Well, mostly they all do. Mostly they all do. It's going to depend on how robust the recovery is, if it's quick or slow, if it's anemic or energetic. But all you have to do is look at the things that were down. Assume, you know, make sure that they're what that when they that, that there is business for their for them to come back to. For example, I I don't know if I'd be buying diesel luxury cars um, stocks, but uh, most of the co car corporations are are in fact going electric. But even that electric, well, that's another story. But pretty much everything, Osman is 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 really the the short answer. Uh, Ailes says, I don't understand the premise of the talk. You said everything is bad and then to sell short. Well, that's what we do, Alice, when things are bad. You sell them because they're falling in price. When things fall in price, we can still profit by that. That's the beauty of short selling, Alice. When prices are down, I can, instead of buying here and then selling it off here, buy low, sell high, and profiting from that gain, I sell high, and then when I close the position, I buy back to close it at a lower price. I sold it at this price. I buy it at here. That's the profit as it declines. Have I made myself clear, Alice? I'm sorry you didn't understand that premise. It's an important premise. Why is POW on constant decline? Ammunition can stay 
on the shelf, Gina. What is POWW, Gina? I don't know what POWW is. Ammunition can stay on the shelf. Uh, first of all, ammunition has a, has a, a, a shelf life. That's not entirely true. Um, uh, Ammo Inc. Incorporated. Why do you, uh, Ammo Inc. is POW? Okay, if you say so. It's not the same person that asked the POW question. Oh, no, it is, Gene. Ammo Inc. I've never heard of Ammo Inc. I don't know, but uh, keep in mind also that let's say let's say that this ammunition was stored in, in in optimum conditions, which it never is. Any anybody any of you who are veterans of of military service know that the, the, the military service is, is except for I don't know it's it, it, it's it, it's short of a lot of optimal things. It's not an optimal organization. It's a rough and ready organization. So a lot of these a lot of ammunition is not stored as, as as well as it could be or should be. But it also undergoes um, modernization and upgrade. And so um, while tons of th tens, of hundreds of thousands of shells have been transferred to the Ukrainians, the new shells are going to be better, more advanced. They'll be certainly more sophisticated. So, so yeah, they, they, that, 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 that was my point about the weapons. China stocks, are they safe to get into now or not? And how do you see their outlook in the next three to six months with the whole China reopening, Bernie asks? Uh, wow, it's a good question. It's um, I, I I would stay away from China China stocks in general because it's a crummy environment. There's no there's no rule of law. They do whatever the hell they want. It's a one party dictatorship. They're unpredictable. Just ask Jack Ma. Just ask Ant Financial how how they like doing business there. Ask any of the citizens of Hong Kong if that's working out well for them. So my answer is no, I, I, I don't think China is a good place to do business and certainly not to invest my hard-earned money in. Um, when China reopens, I would look, Bernie, to deal with the companies that sell their goods. Walmart, Costco, Amazon. Um, those people, all, all the stuff that those, men, those retailers sell comes from China, but uh, I would not invest in Baba or Neo, Alibaba that is, or Neo or... or um, or any or any Chinese corporation for that matter. Um, how long do you estimate the pressure from rising interest rates, inflation, war, pandemic, handling will imp impact the market? Do you think there will have to be a policy change in world events before anything? Nick says, "Wow." First of all, Nick, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not good at those sorts of predictions. Uh, no, frankly, he's anybody else really. But um, uh. From what it looks like, just the clues I see on the table, keep in mind we're in early innings of this mess. Um, and yes, the central banks got it late. They're always late to the party They, they, they because they're afraid of causing recessions. They know that by ringing out inflation, in, in, in an, by raising interest rates in an attempt to ring out inflation, they're going to cause a recession. That's, that's well known. That, that's the introduction to economics. So they're always reluctant to do that because they don't want to hurt the employment, at least the American central bank anyway. They have two hats. The rest of the uh, central banks in the world only have one hat, and that is to keep price levels stable. The American central bank has two, to keep price levels stable and to maximize employment. So, okay, they're late, but they, they're, they're getting serious through, you know, 75 basis points, three quarters of the one hit, they'll do another one next month. They're going to get this under control. And I think because we are making such an enormous recovery from such a radical decline from the pandemic, that the job market will be able to sustain. So I don't think this is going to last years. It'll probably last at least to, to a year from now. I would hope, again, and I don't mean to, I'm not good at predicting, nobody really is. Sometime by the mid, the third quarter to the end of next year, we should be at least see the end of the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know if we'll be completely out of the woods. I'm mixing my metaphors here, but you get my point. I'm looking at a year to a year and a half is my guess. Um, you just froze connection a bit choppy. Joe says, all good now. Okay, what do you think about G pound dollar? Pound dollar, pound's weakening. Pound broke the 120 barrier just recently. Pound, look, the pound has its own problems, okay? Brexit is just now coming. Uh, GBP USD. Here it is, GBP USD cable. Uh, cow, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Oh, no, it came back. It, it broke 120. It hit 119, but it, it did recover. But and but you see a tremendous volume. 
So this is this is it's it's below every ex exponential move, 20, 50, 200. It's weakening. Breakfast, breakfast. Brexit is coming home to roost. Uh, the the European, the uh, UK economy is headed into some seriously difficult uh, headwinds, and uh, the current leadership has got its head up its ass. You'll pardon me. They're going to they're going to in, enrage the European community by by abrogating the treaty and, and making the the the, the, the uh, Northern Ireland agreement the void. They're gonna they're gonna they, he's gonna shoot himself in his foot just like the people shot themselves in the foot when they decided to leave. Uh, uh, the EU. So yeah, th 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 that's a, not a pretty chart, and it ain't going to get any better for the near term, that's for sure. Alice asks again, shorting the market is not a long-term investment strategy. I didn't say it was, ma'am. There is a lot, I hope, I assume you're a woman, I could be wrong. Um, there's a lot of problems in the world, but this will not persist. What do we do when the markets start to recover? How long do you... Um, well, no, no. I, shorting is not a long-term strategy, thank goodness, because that would mean that the, 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 the situation is permanently in decline. Long-term, the, the, the markets are permanently in the, are generally on the rise, not generally or entirely on the rise. Short-term trading, short-term selling is 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 a um, a fallback position. It's a it's a temporary necessity brought along by 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 bad conditions, Alice. Not so. So you're right. Um, when the market starts to recover, you buy. When the when you start to see life coming back into these stocks that have been plummeting, you buy. Um, and Alice, you know, maybe, maybe you, you, maybe I, you, I think you might be touching on something that I'm going to digress over about for a few minutes. We're running into about toward the end of the session, but maybe I, I, I want to make this clear. We're traders. These sessions are run for traders. I'm a trader. If you're a long-term investor, you don't need to know any of this stuff. You buy and hold. That's what Buffett does. Buffett's not a trader. He's a buyer and a holder. He rarely sells. He only buys. And he gets his money from people giving him more money. People buy the, the, the incredibly highly priced uh, Berkshire Hathaway stocks. He takes the money and invests it. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mean to belittle or d d d denigrate the Warren Buffett. He's one of the greats of all time. And I, I surely respect him, and I, and I follow his what he says quite uh, assiduously. But we're not, we don't play his game. We're traders. We, 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 we. I liken what we do, Alice, to picking up nickels in front of a steamroller. Take, get a little profit, get out. Take a little profit, get out. Minimize your losses, take a profit. Stay too long, and you'll be crushed. Traders make a living from the crumbs that fall off the table of the giants. Okay. We, we, it's, it's a different game. It's a shorter term approach, a day to a week, a few weeks, maybe. But that's a long trade for me these days as a trader. I have my investments. They're parked away. I don't worry about them. I don't think about them, including uh, crypto, by the way. For me, crypto is a long term investment. It's way, it's got somebody with much greater skills than I have to trade. But anyway, I hope I've enlightened a little bit, Alice, on, on this selling short, buying long. Osman says, Dr. Elders says his preferred trade is, is FB, Facebook, and BD. What's that, Baidu? Is that your preferred? What is BD? Facebook is Facebook. What is BD, Osman? And what about currency trading in a recession? Currency trading is always good. The currency trade, uh, false, or false breakout. Uh, yeah, well, that, you know, Dr. Elders is a technical trader. And, um, he, you know, he's 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 very adept at his technical trading. He's got fine systems developed. He invented one. He invented the the uh, this index. The only real technical indicator that I use on my charts is the force index, which he invented. So he's a technical guy. And false breakouts is a is a game that's uh, above my pay scale, above my skill skills. But um, a false breakout and BD is would be what bear or, or bear, bearish or bullish divergence. Those are highly technical maneuvers that are very hard to call. And for me, for me, I understand. I, I as I say, I know, I know Dr. Elder's uh, uh, theories and, and plans pretty well. I don't, I don't use those. I'm more a macro guy. I, 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 I to me, it's the low line, the low hanging fruit. I can see the trends. I understand what's driving them fundamentally, and I profit from them. It's a simpler approach. Um, currency trading in a recession, okay, highly recommended. There's a lot of movement now that interest rates are finally underway. Let's take a look at um, 
Let me see if I can bring it back. Look at that. Technology is our friend. Um, particularly the emerging market currencies are doing real, uh, I shouldn't say doing what well. they're, they're moving, it's volatility. Excuse me. My personal favorite, of course, is this, the Euro Lira or the Dollar Lira. The, uh, yes, I like the Dollar Lira. We've done very well out of this. This is a rare opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. This is the kind of chart that brings tears to this trader's eyes. I won't go into the fundamentals behind this, but uh, do you have to be a genius to make money out of this 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 animal? No. And this is an hour, four hour. I'll give you a daily. You don't like that? It's a daily. I'll give you one hour. They're all the same. Okay. Yeah. Foreign currency always a good trade, Osman. I mean, if you know what you're doing, like like everything else. And, let me issue my standard risk disclaimer here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, um, what do you think about uh, Euro T O U? Oh, that, that, there it is. I, was I told you exactly what I think about it. Um, let me just say, as I always say, because it's the truth, you will only be trading with money that you can afford to lose. It's not long-term investments. This is not your pension fund. This is not your child's education fund. This is money you can afford to lose because lose you will. Um, I lose too. Don't think I lose. Don't lose. I lose plenty like everybody else. But the sine qua non in this business is to make more than you lose. And we do in the long run. But but lose we do. And I don't want anybody to think this is a get rich quick scheme that uh, a child can do it. Don't believe those nonsensical things you see in the internet where, the, you know, this is a business like every other business. You have to do your homework. You have to put in your time. You have to work hard at it <clears throat> to make a buck. But the beauty of it is you can, lots of people do. It's fun, it's very exciting, it's stimulating, it's challenging. I put uh, two kids through college, one in graduate school, and I got a couple still left in college. And, and um, it's been a, this business is, is a good business. I can be, uh, tell you straight, up, straight, out, straight, out, straight out about that. It's work. i also tell you something else straight out. I lost my trading account three times in my life, twice with quite sizable sums of money. So it's a, it's a good business, but it's a business. It's a hard business. You have to put your time in. There's no get-rich-quick scheme. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? All right. I'm really, really impressed with all these questions. Oh, yes, one, two more things, two more final announcements, or three. Hours. First is um, there's a poll and a survey at the end of this uh, session, or maybe you can have access to it now. I, I don't know. I don't remember. <clears throat> Excuse me, please take a few minutes and fill it out. It, we're, it, it helps us. It helps us a lot to improve our offerings, to, to make them better for you. The second thing is that uh, next Thursday at uh, 2000 GMT, we're going to talk about uh, why, the, why the US dollar is strong and what that means for, for trading opportunities. So it's an FX session. Why is the US dollar strong? We'll talk about interest rates. We'll talk about you know the, the, the standard macro subjects, but we're going to talk about that, that that one chart which I sort of skipped over because it wasn't the stock chart. When I look at uh, indices, we're going to take a look in detail at this chart. That's the U.S. dollar index. We're going to understand understand it more. Um, and so the last thing I want to say is um, we want short training earlier than September, says Muhammad. Well, I like that stridency, sir. I, I appreciate that. A man with an opinion. Un well, unfortunately, let me let me just hold my tongue a bit. Well, I was going to say, uh, what I was going to say. Oh, I see. see. These are booked in advance. They're booked long way in advance for all sorts of reasons. And I have my dates booked out to. Uh, well, actually, early August. But uh, let me see what I can do. I can change them. You know, I set them up. I can change them. Let me change them, and I'll see if I can get you one sooner than later, Muhammad. Stay tuned. Watch whatever, however you get. There. If you're a client, you a client of ours, Muhammad. If you are, you'll get plenty of notice. If not, the rest of you'll have to follow, I guess, on investing.com or wherever we advertise these sessions. I will deliver a short selling session within the month, guaranteed. 
All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, that will bring the session to a close. Um, oh, yes, the last thing I wanted to say was this. Um, for those of you who are uh, regulars, um, clients, you, you, you're aware of, of, of the level of, of uh, service and support we give you. My pleasure, Oki. It's always a pleasure to have you in your room and your comments. Um, we do the best we can for our clients. We're a, we're a you know upright, stand-up brokerage. Uh, we're one of the best online brokerages in terms of training and help and assistance. And in and, and this session, we, we hope will be an example of that to you. So you're used to this. You know what we give. You know what's available here on, as clients of the house. For those of you who are considering opening an online trading account, please, please um, open one up with us. We, 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 this is a simple sample of, of what you what is in store for you. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Joe. Thank you for those kind words. Um, great. We're, we're going to have shorting within the next month, I promise, Joe. Maybe even sooner. Maybe next week. Don't hold me to that. I have to do some jiggling, and I have a few people to push around, but I, I can do it. My pleasure, Osman. Thank you for all your comments. Thank you all for your participation. I really can't tell you how, how much I enjoyed tonight's session. And um, and stay tuned. We'll uh, we'll have uh, we'll have more of the same. My pleasure, Bernie. Thank you. You uh, outstanding question you uh, yours tonight. It was a real pleasure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring the session to a close. Uh, I'm your host, Seth Julian, wishing you all, ladies and gentlemen, the ability to trade with confidence. Bye bye for now.